Ladies and gentlemen, let's stand for the reading of God's Holy Word. And I am supposed to be preaching, continuing to preach the series, Jesus Reveals God's True Intent Behind the Law, Part 34, The Law of Retribution. The Just Jesus Evangelistic Campaign, Day 279, since January the 20th, 2017, Day 646, since January the 1st, 2016. But God has led me to go in a different direction, temporarily at least. And so the question today is, what is the Gospel? According to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, the gospel is embodied in these words. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. And then Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2, For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. I do not ask me whether or not the tax bill is going to pass. Uh, frankly, my dear, I can care less. And do not ask me whether or not uh, President Trump will win a second term. Do not ask me uh, about the Democrats winning the other day. Now on moral issues, I might have an answer for you from the Word of God. Because I understand that if you don't deal with those moral issues, such as the abomination of homosexuality that's running rampant in this country because of foolish acting politicians uh, that will gnaw on this country like termites and destroy it uh, and uh, from the inside out. But other than that, by the grace of God, I am determined to know nothing among you other than Jesus Christ and Him crucified, the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. You say, why, preacher? Because Jesus Christ is the beginning of everything. Uh, when you know Jesus Christ, you you got it all. You got it going on. Uh, for Jesus Christ is somebody. And he can change not only your life, but your uh, trajectory. He can break the curse of your past generations and put you on a path that your ancestors do not of. You may be seated. And so, ladies and gentlemen, David 
Nicholas, the late pastor and founder of Gospel Boot Camp, uh, broke down and explained 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 and 4, and I like the way he did it, phrase by phrase. He continues by saying, When Adam and Eve sinned by disobeying God, the spirit censor within them no longer worked properly, which meant they could no longer relate to God properly. They were dead to the spiritual realm and dead to God. Later on, they died physically, and then there is eternal death or eternal separation from God and all that is good. In other words, eternal damnation in hell. Beloved, he went on to say, it is the sin and death problems that make it impossible for a person to gain life with God through his own good works. Because no matter how good he is, or how many good things he does, he still is a criminal in God's sight and under the sentence of eternal death. You say, how does that work? For example, we got something going on in our country and uh, a house cleaning is being made and God is allowing people to be exposed for their wicked sexual harassment of others and people are telling on people who did stuff to them 20 25 years ago 15 years ago 10 years ago it says a lot about them that they took this long but it says a whole lot worse about the uh, criminals who did this to show you how even human beings hold people accountable and want justice a man who's in the news for committing the wicked sin of sexual harassment using his power over other people uh, will go will possibly go to jail another one has already made a movie and they are airbrushing him out for his wicked evil homosexual sexual harassment of men a big old black man football player is taking the steps to sue another man for sexually harassing him. Multiple women are doing that right now. After 10, 15, 20 years or more, human beings holding people accountable. So even though you may do some good work over here, God, the judge of the world, still remembers your sinning against him over here. So, beloved, your good works will never outweigh your bad works. Because God knows all things and he remembers everything. He sees you as a criminal. You have disobeyed his law. You have broken his commandments. You have lusted after and committed adultery with people that you are not married to and who are married to other people. You have lied about things and he still remembers. You may have forgotten, but he remembers. He remembers how you stole some money from your grandmother's drawer. 
You say, oh, that's not stealing. Oh, yes, it is. And why do we do such things? It's because we are sinners. And you need to understand that you need to accept the fact that you are a sinner. And that you have broken God's law. His Ten Commandments. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all have broken God's laws. We all have done wrong. We have done evil. And some of us have not been caught yet. So don't get all smug about Kevin Spacey. Don't get all smug about Harvey Weinstein. Don't get the big head because you just haven't been caught. You're not famous enough. But you've done your evil and you've done your dirt. And God knows all about it. Because he can see all into the sinful nook and crannies of our lives. Secondly, dear friend, accept the fact that there is a penalty, there is a punishment for sin. The Bible says in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death. Death. That's how bad sin is. You want to see the result of sin? Let me take you to the funeral, funeral home down the street. And they have a row of dead bodies who once lived on this earth. Yes, they went to Subway. Yes, they went to their famous restaurants. Yes, they worked out at the gym. Yes, they took uh, metformin. Yes, they took other medication uh, to keep their bodies alive. <clears throat> but they're dead and gone. And my dear friend, because of your sin, you're going to die. Oh, yes, you will. One day, we will have your funeral because of your sin. And we not only die spiritually, but we die, I mean, not only do we die physically, but we die spiritually. The body goes to the grave. The spirit goes down as well. The soul goes down as well into hell. And so that's why, beloved, you need to hear what Jesus Christ said, who, yes, was a hell fire and brimstone preacher. In fact, the main reason why Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, came down and died for your sins and mine is because he wanted to see you saved from hell and have a home in heaven with him. Now that's love for you. Jesus Christ said in Matthew 10:28, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Hell is an awful place. Hell is a sad place. Hell is a place without God. Hell is a place of darkness. Hell is a place of pain and torment. And uh, you will... Receive the justice of God in hell if you don't trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. Every lick of the fires of hell will burn you for eternity. This is how much God hates sin. Another picture of how much God hates sin is His dear Son, Jesus Christ suffering and being humiliated before the world and dying on a cruel cross that he did not deserve. He had never committed a sin. And we killed him. Not just the Roman soldiers. We killed him. Not just Pilate. We killed him. Not just the Jews. We killed him. What is your name? Deborah, you killed him. What is, what is your name? Mark, you killed him. What is your name? Daniel, you killed him. And I killed him. Why? Because of our sins. 
He rolled, God rolled all of our sins, our wickedness, our fornication, our adultery, our nastiness and our filthiness, our lies, our grabbing people and raping people. And God rolled all of that wickedness onto his dear son, the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, who took away the sins of the world. This is no small matter, by the way. Because some of us are still sinning. And his death on the cross, his burial, his resurrection, paid for it all. Now, beloved, that's love for you. You'll never find a love like this on earth. Never. Nobody will ever love you that much. Your mother doesn't love you that much. Your father doesn't love you that much. That's love for you. Uh, I would encourage you to trust Christ as Savior today. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou you shall be saved. Now, hell is bad news. But I have some good news for you straight from the same preacher, the hellfire and brimstone preaching Jesus, preached this good news to you and to me and to Nicodemus one night. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, his name is Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Just believe in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who took away the sins of the world. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou you shalt be saved. Just look to him, and he'll save you. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 13, very clearly, that if thou, that if you shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, And shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou, you, shall be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou, you, shall be saved. Pray and ask him to save you. And he will. I'll be glad to lead you. In the sinner's prayer, as Michael Lewis led me some 40 years ago. Repeat after me, phrase by phrase, and mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, I pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I acknowledge that I am a sinner, and a wicked sinner at that. I confess my sins of lust and covetousness. I confess my sins of stealing. I confess my sins of lying. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of my sins. As I now believe with all of my heart in the Lord Jesus Christ as the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world, including mine, Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my wretched soul from the hell that I deserve. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent. And help me to turn from my evil ways and to follow you in the new life. In Jesus Christ's name I pray, and for his sake, amen. Now, beloved, if you believe in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ today, the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world, and that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, was buried, and rose again. Allow me to say to you congratulations on doing the most important thing in life. 
and that is trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my pamphlet, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10:9, I am the door. By me of any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Dear friend, if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, please email me at dw3 at gospelitesociety.com and let us know or use one of our other emails on whatever site that you're on. There is some free material that we want to send you. If you have a prayer request, please email that to us as well, and we will pray for you until you tell us to stop. Dear friend, God loves you. We love you. And may God bless you. Real good is my prayer.